Hello and welcome to ATV News. I'm Charity Pepezani with your top stories this Thursday evening. A large group of HIV patients and campaigners took to the streets of Harare yesterday. They were protesting against alleged corruption in the handling of AIDS levy by the National Council, the main body in charge of HIV AIDS policy. A petition was presented by the demonstrators to the NAC's management, accusing the organization of not prioritizing the welfare of HIV AIDS sufferers. The protesters said the NAC was using 40% of the AIDS levy, an employee tax for administration costs. They also alleged that life-saving drugs were in short supply and yet the NAC was splashing on luxury cars and workshops. A government minister says killing witches in Zimbabwe is not a crime. Zimbabwean Justice and Legal Affairs Minister Patrick Chinamasa has issued a statement warning all witchcraft users and those dabbling in supernatural powers that the government will not protect them from public anger. The minister made his remarks yesterday in the Senate while responding to inquiries from Mutasanyanga Senator Patrick Chitaka of MDCT who had asked why the government was not repealing the Witchcraft and Suppression Act, considering that the practice was rampant in the African culture. Police have found an unidentified body of a Zimbabwean woman killed by lions. Scouts on patrol in the Bumi Hills discovered the body of a woman. A Mashonaland West police spokesperson confirmed that investigations were underway to establish the identity of the woman. He said the game scout found a passport bearing the name Simbisai Makwa, Machakwa, 37 of Gokwe, in the handbag. But mysteriously, the bearer of the passport contacted police to tell them that she was in fact alive. Police are still trying to uncover the identity of the woman attacked by the lions. In Zambia, a man from Changola has been sentenced to death by hanging for murdering his wife. 30-year-old Myron Sinkala killed his wife after she refused to cook and shim a dish for him. Sinkala, a houseboy of Muntampa in Chingola, battered his, battered his wife in December of last year. The victim, Edna Makaliki, 20, was still alive after the incidents, but later passed away in, Ching, in Changa Hospital due to a hemorrhage. In passing judgment, Judge Isaac Kamwendo said the evidence in the matter strongly connected the accused to the commission of the crime. Mr. Kamwendo said, I find that the prosecution has proved the case against you beyond reasonable doubt. I therefore find you guilty of the murder and sentence you to death by hanging. In entertainment, the debut video by Zambian singer Ariel, Smile Again, will be aired on the Black American Entertainment Channel, BET, this October. The, B the video will first premiere on BET's The Heat program. Ariel, who's based in Ukraine, says other networks will air his video, including a High TV and Vox TV. Ariel, whose real name is Mwiza Shaba, received a double nomination at the first ever Indie Music Channel Awards in the United States of America for his official debut single. Now let's watch a preview of the video, Smile Again. Now with the roundup of the day's top sports stories, here's Michael Mambo. Thank you, Charity. In football, the Ghana FA boss Kwesi Nyatai says the Black Cats are not bothered that Zambia won their protest against Sudan. If you remember, Zambia lost the match 2-0 because apparently Sudan had fielded a player who's not supposed to play. The player is called Salif Ali. As a result, FIFA have awarded the match to Zambia uh, by a scoreline of 3-0. That puts Zambia at the top of the group summit. Tension is mounting ahead of Zimbabwe's African Cup of Nations qualifier against Angola on Sunday. Warriors goalkeeper has stalked the flames by claiming that Angola are not special and says Zimbabwe must remain focused on the task at hand. Malawi's netball star Mwai Kumwenda, who plays in Australia for Peninsula Wave, has received two awards for her outstanding performance in 2012 Victorian Netball Championship. Kumwenda was named as the most valuable player and received 
the Hot Shots Award for 2012 season during the Netball Gala Awards in Australia on Saturday. She described the awards as a big honor. Tributes continue to pour in for some former Zimbabwean cricketer and coach Kevin Curran who sadly passed away yesterday in Mutare at an early age of 53. Zimbabwean Cricket Managing Director Wilfred Mukondiwa said, We're still in shock. Kevin was the epitome of health and we still have to make sense of this tragic loss. And now in a special episode of Zim Talk, Liam speaks with former gen journalist, cricketer and best-selling author Douglas Rogers who knew Kevin Curran. Yes, thank you Michael, and yesterday was indeed a sad day for cricket as Kevin Curran died at the age of 53 years old. Now, someone who knew Kevin and knew him as a player is Douglas Rogers, yeah, who yeah. is a best-selling author and journalist, and he joins me now. Thanks for joining us, uh, Douglas. I mean, then, Obviously, yeah, on the I show played cricket today, we've been talking about ago, the really I mean, sad passing of Kevin Curran. Good friend of his, I mean, um, but yeah, I knew him. And, and uh, Michael about informs him, me um, that you, you knew him. Uh, yeah, I mean, he, he was... He was a member of the Zimbabwe that there was, I think, in my mind, the, the greatest Zimbabwe cricket side was from about the mid 1980s to about 1990, and he was like a, uh, a member of that side. Um, uh, amazing all rounder. I mean, he was a very uh, quick bowler. He would open the bowling or, or be a first change bowler, and he batted in the middle order, and a very aggressive, competitive cricketer. Um, he. He was a member of the team, the 1983 team that beat Australia in the World Cup. I think it was the first. It was. Yeah, uh, I think he might have played for Zimbabwe in about the first game in about 1980. But his first, yeah, his first proper international game was that that night. I think that was his debut, wasn't it? He beat Australia. Um, and he, unfortunately for for him, he he wasn't around when Zimbabwe got. I mean, he was still playing, but he stayed playing county cricket. But when Zimbabwe got test status, it was in about 1993, 1993 when they first started playing test cricket. And by that time, he was sort of slightly past his prime. So he missed out on um, test cricketer, but if Zimbabwe had been playing in the mid-1980s up until 1990, he would have had a terrific... Played for Gloucestershire and uh, Northampton. And um, you, you mentioned that he played well, um, quite a bit in England. Well, just from what I can gather from, um, I mean, everyone you speak to about him is that he was this incredibly fierce competitor. So what sort of legacy has uh, he left on an, on an international He's trained harder than a lot of people. He's very fit, which is the, um, um, the tragedy of what happened, because he, he died like he a young guy, sort of in his early 50s. Today, the ATV team decided that this picture of Mfano Wami sent by Anes Mantambo was the picture of the day. Why not send us your pictures and see if you can get on the big screen? Thanks for joining us and have a pleasant evening.